Hey everyone and welcome back to another recent pickup video. It's been quite a while since you've uh, seen me upload one of these videos to YouTube and that's because me and my girlfriend we moved uh, last October, October last year. And moving with about approximately about 3000 games is a pain in the ass and I wouldn't really wish want to wish that on anyone, not even my, you know, my worst enemy. But uh, we made it through uh, and we did move, but the game room, uh, or the, the room that I wanted to convert into a game room, um, was kind of hideous. So we had to put a lot of work in there, we had to change the wallpapers and, you know, furnish and stuff. Because when we moved in here, uh, this room was, used to be some kind of a nursery or something. And it had, you know, the most disgusting wallpapers. Um, you know, it was straight out of a bad horror movie, you know, when you can hear the fetuses claw around in the walls and, you know, pretty disturbing stuff. But, but we managed to clean this shit up and uh, the game room is now in working order. It is, it is uh, not complete because um, I'm missing a lot of shelving units, shelves, because I can only house about two thirds of my collection so far. Um, and I need to throw up some posters and get better lighting and, and stuff. But I do have, you know, my retro TV in here and my new TV in here. Um, and stuff like that. So I, and a couch and stuff. So I can, can pretty much uh, be out of my girlfriend's hair, <laughs> so to speak. Because um, my last, or rather our last apartment was... Uh, that whole apartment was pretty much a game room because it was my apartment and she moved in there. And she was like, yeah, where can I put my stuff? And I don't know. Where there's no room for games, you know. So <laughs> when we moved, we moved to a bigger place so I could get most of the games in here. I mean, I would probably have a system or two out in the living room, which is much bigger. Um, but it's nice, it's cozy. And uh, when it's done, I will most definitely make a room tour for you guys, if you want to see that. Um, yeah, so the reason for the delay is, you know, we moved and w I wanted to get this in working order because all my games were in moving boxes, tightly packed, mind you, since I am i didn't want the games to get hurt or, or damaged or anything, so I took my time packaging those, so it, unpacking everything took quite a few days. And yeah, um, so this pickup video is basically um, October, November and December of last year. Uh, I know I have a planned pickup video for January um, as well, but I will probably shoot that in a day or two because there's quite a lot of games here and I don't think that adding January to the pile will make it, uh, anyone happy. Um, and I really want to make to you know start playing some games today as well. So um, anyway, on to the games. Uh, the most important game of last year was released in October. Uh, my favorite game, my game of the year, and many others game of the year actually. And that is Dark Souls. And uh, not many of you know this, but. Um, you know, I collect a lot of games. I don't collect for any specific system or any specific, uh, you know, a specific series. Uh, I'm not that of a fanatical of a collector, you know, someone who just says, oh, I want to collect all the Mega Man games and that, that it, that's it. Um, I collect everything. Uh, games mostly, not, you know, plushies and stuff. They do happen to come into my collection, uh, but... Uh, I'm not a Sonic collector, if you know what I mean. I don't have all the plushies, all the, you know, um, that's just insane for me. I, I don't have that much room and I want to play games. I don't want to cuddle with the plushies. So, but I do have um, some things, some, uh, what should I say? I have a specific place set aside for games from the company from software, the Japanese uh, developers because I really love their games and I collect for for them you know if if it's if I do have any niche niche in my collection it's uh, from software and I do have pretty much all their games 
but I tend to buy the Japanese version, the PAL version, the US version and stuff like that. And guides and, you know, magazines and, you know, if, if I find something cool looking. And Dark Souls is, of course, a From Software game and it's just so great. This is the unopened PS3 version. Uh, and I will show you in a second why it's not open. It's because I also bought the 360 limited edition. This I opened because I played Demon's Souls on PS3 and I really wanted to play Dark Souls on 360 just to see if it, you know, if it could handle the, the awesomeness that was the Souls games. And it could, and I'm also sort of an achievement whore. I'm not among the greatest, but I, I am known to really get addicted to the achievements. Uh, so I said to myself, I'll try this one first, and I did, and I took all the achievements in it, and it was just mind-blowing. And I have started to play the PS3 version as well, but not the limited edition one, so bear with me. I have more Dark Souls stuff to show. Um, I have the uh, Japanese version of Dark Souls, with the most, this is the most beautiful cover. All right? And that came with the... Uh, limited edition soundtrack and uh, a little art book very thin but hey it came with with the game i also have something that i'm very proud of to own and that's a signed copy by the producer miyazaki see signed right there in the corner japanese version also uh, this is sort of like the crown in my collection uh, for from software games um, So That's almost everything from Dark Souls. I also got this one This is a promotion um, The promotional package that only went out to reviewers and only a selected few uh, and it comes with The game of course this is the PS3 version this one is the one I've been playing because then I don't have to open the uh, uh, the limited one, so I can keep it sealed. It also came with a sort of a character creator. You can flip uh, the uh, the pages here and sort of create a weird creature. You can change legs, torso, and head. So you know, mix and match armor types. Kind of cool, but it's not really necessary. And also this Dark Souls Zippo lighter with the emblem on it. I don't know how well you can see that, but uh, yeah. Um, and this one is not easy to find at all, so I'm very happy to have this. Um, it also comes in this shield, uh, um, sort of like buckler uh, uh, case, which is nice. And rounding out the Dark Souls pickups uh, this October is the, the guide, of course. Uh, it's still sealed because I got the guide when I, wanted, I had already beaten the game. Um, but it's really nice, it's a hard cover one with, it's supposed to have really nice art and maps in it. Uh, and I've been really, I really wanted to open it to check it out, but I might buy another copy just to keep it open, just to open it. Um, and mind you, I only do this with the From Software games. Most of the other games I buy a copy, or two if it's for the PS3 and the 360 and there's some kind of difference. Um, and I usually just open them because I play them. Uh, but. Um, when it comes to From Software, I usually just play one or two of them and keep the rest of them sealed. So... Uh, is that crazy? I, I don't think it is. It's, it's cool, I think it's cool. <laughs> uh, well, um, if any of you have uh, used this guide or have, uh, had a look at it, uh, please let me know if it's any, if it's any good. So, that's the Dark Souls uh, stuff. I'm not going through this in any particular order because there's so much. Uh, so let's just take this bad boy. Um, also bought Might and Magic Heroes 6. I haven't been able to play this a whole lot, but I really liked the... I, I, I think I've beaten the first act or something where you played as the humans. Um, and I thought it was quite nice, quite good looking. It's always hard with the Heroes of Mathematic games. I, it's probably some some kind of retro feeling or something or nostalgia because I still think that number three is the best one. 
And I don't know why, because it's pretty basic compared to, you know, the late, they introduced a lot of stuff. But I still think number three is the best. I don't know why. I might just need to have to play more of this, uh, to be sure. And another PC game is this asshole. <clears throat> I guess a lot of you bought this one. This is the Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Um, no? The Old Republic, not Knights of the Old, Old, Old Republic. Uh, that's other games, but this is the MMO. Uh, and uh, I, I played the first month that you get included in here, and I thought it was quite nice. But I have a lot of other games that, you know, just screams for my attention. So I just, I didn't feel like subscribing just yet. And I'm not even a big of a Star Wars fan, but I really. <clears throat> enjoyed the single player feeling you got from this game, the, you know, the missions, it felt like playing... Well, it had this Mass Effect feel, of course, it's from Bioware, it's, you know, this Knights of the Old Republic feel, but... It was really nice, it was a, a game I could play without having a group, even though I, you know, I'm a big Final Fantasy XI player, when I play MMOs I want to play with people, but this was... I played this just like I played a single player game. I, I jumped in, I got the story, I thought the voice acting was great, um, and that's pretty much it. So if I subscribe later, it will be to complete my Bounty Hunter uh, story, because I didn't manage to complete it entirely. But I got a, I got quite far in, far in the story. Right. Uh, also picked up, and this was a game of the year for a lot of people, I haven't even tried it yet, but I really need to do that. Um, soon, because I really like the first one. And that's uh, Arkham City, Batman, this is the limited edition. Uh, I'm a sucker for limited editions, and I know that's... <sighs> Usually, they are extremely expensive, overly expensive, for what you get. You get a bit of, bit of plastic or a soundtrack or something. Uh, and it's almost double the price, or more. But it's just something about these big boxes. I, I, I adore, I love big boxes, even though I hardly can, I can hardly fit them anywhere. Um, but, but I like them, so I tend to buy collector's editions when I can. Not always, but often. All right. Uh, also bought Don Pachi Resurrection, uh, the deluxe edition. I don't know why it's called the deluxe edition, because I don't think there's a a normal edition uh, released by Rising Star Games, but it sounds good, um, and it does include the uh, DLC from that the Japanese market got for DLC, I think. But it's a great game. Uh, it's a bullet hell shooter from Cave, and um, most of you has, have probably seen this if you if you um, subscribe to Splatter Trigger's channel. Um, and it was released here in Europe, but it is region free. So Americans and what have you import this. If you live in Japan, you don't need to because <laughs> you have your own version, of course. Uh, also bought a game that I really want to try out pretty much now, and that's Rayman Origins. This is the collector's edition, because this collector's edition was just like a couple of dollars more, so I didn't, I didn't mind. Um, I haven't tried this yet, but I've seen it in motion, and oh my god, it looks stunning. It looks beautiful, and I, I kind of like platform games, so um, I really want to try that out, try that one out. <laughs> Saints Row, the third, haven't been able to try this one out yet, mm, but um, I don't know, <laughs> I've heard it's supposed to be quite crazy, so uh, even more so than the earlier games, so going to be quite a ride, I think. Assassin's Creed Revelations. This is the collector's edition, not the Animus edition. I don't know what the difference is exactly, but this one is the one I settled with. Um, I've only played Assassin's Creed 1. Yeah, I have all the other games, boxed collector's editions, but I haven't gotten around to play them yet. And I don't know why, I mean, Assassin's Creed 1 was a pretty good game. Even though I was quite disappointed with it, because I thought it was supposed to be set in these medieval times, and the story was set in the medieval times, but it was sort of a Matrix Animus 
thingamajig uh, and I didn't really like it that you were some kind of bartender from New York traveling mines into why not keep it medieval but now we all know why of course because they can make sequel after sequel and make us uh, animus into different uh, guys like Ezio from the second one or um, the new Assassin's Creed 3 will probably have. I, I heard some rumors that it was supposed to be from the Civil War or something. Um, so, you know, they have a lot of creativity while having the, this whole anonymous thing going on. Also bought another From Software game. This is Tenshu, Tenshu C. Le Z, maybe. Um, haven't opened it yet, but I really want to. Uh, I, re I really like the Tenshu games, actually. Um, they are good stealth games playing ninjas like you know I like action in ninjas you know that's what got me into ninja games to begin with you know ninja Gaiden and blue shadow or shadow of the ninjas you know it and, um, and stuff like that but uh, when it comes to sneaking ninjas ten the tension series is pretty nice some really cool kills and, and stuff like that uh, another from software game uh, that I was missing from my ps2 collection is Evergrace uh, I haven't played this but I've heard people saying it's pretty bad but since I really like those from software games that people tend to think is slow and uh, and boring I tend to like you know Eternal Ring, um, Armored Core, uh, Kingsfield, Shadow Tower I love those games I love I love them so I have to check this one out uh, there's a sequel to this called Forever Kingdom as well it was only released in Japan and uh, and USA so I have to pick that one up probably off of eBay for quite a nasty sum. Also bought Child of Eden. I don't have a Kinect and uh, the only game that would... Well, perhaps two games. This and the coming, the upcoming From Software um, Steel Battalion game that uses the Kinect. Those are probably the only ones, um, the only games I feel like I need a Kinect for. Um, but I can't use the Kinect in here. It's too small, I'm sitting too close to the screen. Uh, so I probably will have to use that in the living room. Anyway, Child of Eden, I've heard good things. Um, so, I really wanted to try it out. Okay, uh, this is no shocker. Zelda, Skyward Sword. This is the limited edition that came with the orchestral CD. Uh, I didn't really want the Wiimote uh, edition because just, you know, it was just a Wiimote. I have like four of them already with Motion Plus inside since, um, yeah, so I, I I don't really need that. And the reason I have so many Wii, Wiimotes is I have an American unit and a, and a European unit. And I, yeah, <laughs> that's why. And, um, I haven't tried this one out yet, but I really like the Zelda games as much as the other one, the next person. So I really want to try this one out. But I'm playing Xenoblade Chronicles on the the Wii. I was playing that when we moved, and since I didn't unpack my Wii for quite a while, uh, I really want to complete Xenoblade first because it's a lovely game. You Americans who are getting it now, man, you're gonna love it if you didn't already import it buy it it's a great game it's probably one of the best rpgs this generation even though it's on you know <sighs> software that it's on hardware that isn't you know top notch it's not a 360 or a ps3 game but it's still still a great game and i'm really looking forward to the lost story um anyway moving along uh, lord of the rings war in the north this is the collector's edition i have the box with the uh, nasty Ice Troll up here somewhere, and this is the steel book that came inside with the game and everything. And uh, uh, you know, if you like Snowblind games, if you like Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance and Dark Alliance 2, you you will probably like War in the North. Uh, yet again, I'm not the biggest Lord of the Rings fan. I mean, I, I read the the books and before the the movies came, and I watched the movies, and you know they were all right, but I never got into the whole craze. Um, but I really like this game actually, it's, it was quite fun, we played it cooperative, cooperatively and I think that's the way to go. Um, I mean it's, it's not a fantastic game by, by any means, but uh, it's quite, uh, we had quite a good run actually. So, I 
kind of recommend that, especially if it's fallen in price quite drastically. So you could probably pick it up quite cheap now. Right? Uh, Ace Combat Assault Horizon. I uh, haven't opened it yet, I got it for uh, Christmas. Right? Uh, I can imagine pretty much every PS3 owner picked this one up when it came up. It's Ico and Shadow of the Colossus, um, the HD collection. I haven't opened it uh, since I've played both games already, but I really want to get back into them. Uh, especially Ico, since I think that's the better of the two. Um, I don't know why, it's just something about the atmosphere of Ico. Shadow of the Colossus is a great game, but I think Ico is the better one. Uh, so I really want to get into this one as soon as I have the uh, the chance. Also picked up another Tenchu game. This is the uh, Wii version that I had postponed to get for quite a while. It's uh, Shadow Assassins and this is supposed to be quite good. It upset a lot of people when it came out on the, the Wii instead of the uh, the other hardware, you know, the 360 and the PS3. But, uh, I heard the unique controls is quite nice in this game, so I really want to check that one out. Right. Uh, PSP game, Fate Extra, it's the limited edition, I haven't opened it yet. Um, if you've tried this game and it's good, please let me know. I'm not even sure what kind of game it is, I, I'm kind of hoping it's an RPG because that's what I was hoping it was like. I bought this on a whim, you know. So, well, we'll see. Uh, Persona 2, Innocent Sin. I have this game on the uh, PlayStation, of course. Um, but it's always nice to have you know, the PSP version with the mini soundtrack included. And uh, try this one out. It's not as good as the PlayStation 2 version, uh, PlayStation 1 version. Uh, but it's quite nice. I, I'm, I love the Persona series. Um, yeah, I still think number three is my favorite. I'm not sure. Yeah, quite a hilarious uh, end boss in this one, though. If you if you play, I'm not going to spoil it, but pretty hilarious. Uh, also bought of uh, an American uh, 360 game since I have an American 360. Since you get a lot of games that we don't get, and uh, the system is not region free, so uh, I bought a American 360. I'm a sucker, uh, and I bought uh, that game is Automedius Excellent. So I'm not even going to try to pronounce that, uh, pronu pronounce it that, on uh, pronounce that uh, in Japanese like a lot of people tend to do when they unbox this and snuggle with the. Uh, I think it comes with yeah, a pillow cover. Whew, stay classy, Japan. Stay classy. Yeah, good stuff. But I heard it's uh, some kind of a spiritual follow-up to Gradius. I really, really like Gradius. Um, but I don't know why Japan feels like every shoot em up needs to be about anime girls riding brooms, riding rockets, riding dragons, riding... What's wrong with the spaceship? It's always been... It's always worked. I mean, R-Type, Gradius, Axelay, they're all... They all worked with a spaceship. You didn't need a... Even though I kind of like the anime vibe as well, not as much as the spaceship, but you know, I like Poké Rocky, Kiki Kai Kai, um, which is not anime, but well, you know what I mean. Also picked up a Game Boy Advance game. This is the Tales of, uh, I think, I think it's Fantasia, yeah, Tales of Fantasia. Uh, all only came out on the Super Famicom. I have that version as well, but since my Japanese is, is shit. I can't, uh, can't really play that game, can I? Uh, so I bought the Game Boy Advance version, and it was really nice, in nice condition, from Software Game. Bought another copy of Shadow Tower, uh, the original black label on the PlayStation 1. This is a great dungeon crawler. And I actually like Kingsfield better than this, but this is... I mean, a lot of people think that, uh, rather say that, um, Demon Souls and Dark Souls are spiritual successors to Kingsfield, and they're right. But they're sp spiritual successor to pretty much all from Software's uh, dungeon crawler games. There's a lot of 
I mean, I mean most of the nasty darkness, melancholic, uh, weird shit from Dark Souls and Demon Souls is from this the Shadow Tower series. It's a lot darker than Kingsfield, which is kind of hard since Kingsfield is pretty dark already uh, and menacing. But uh, I recommend these games a whole lot. Um, the PS2 version is far superior since it's uh, a lot more different than the King. This is a lot like Kingsfield, uh, but Shadow Tower Abyss for the PlayStation 2 is um, quite unique. So try that one out. Um, if you buy the Japanese version, you can download um, a translated ROM and use that, and you won't have any problem with the law since you already ho have a copy. So buy a copy first if you if you don't want a pirate. All right. I uh, also bought the Atelier Totori, The Adventure of Arland. This is the premium edition for the PS3. Uh, strangely enough, I've only played uh, the first two Atelier games for the PS2. Or there might be more Atelier games that came out before that, but I, I haven't heard of them. So now I have the both, both these games for the PS3 and all the games for the PS2. Uh, but I like my JRPGs, especially if they are prone to grinding. I mean, a lot of people hate grinding, but I love grinding. It's, uh, it soothes my soul. Another From Software game I was missing, and that's Echo Knight. I have uh, the PS2 version and uh, that is called Echo Knight Beyond, and this is the first version um, that came for the PlayStation 1. This is the Black Label, Black Label 1. And it's sort of a... Um, first person adventure game sort of uh, with ghosts and stuff um, so it's it's not a dungeon crawler per se but it's and it's not really a survival horror game either it's somewhere in between an adventure and a survival horror game um, and a lot of people give it shitty reviews because it's slow and yeah a lot of from software games are slow and hard uh, but I haven't tried this one out yet, um, so I can't really say if I like it or not, but I really liked Echo Knight Beyond, which was very different. So I really, I have high hopes for it, All right? And I picked up a PS1 JRPG, G JRPG that I was missing, and that's Thousand Arms, it's complete in really really good condition. One of the few JRPGs I'm missing. Uh, JRPGs are pretty much... Like a lot of people that's kind of like what cemented me as a gamer, you know. I could spend just hundreds of hours on just one game, just grinding, and, you know, finding everything. Um, I'm a lot more diverse today but I still think RPGs of all you know, whether they're Japanese Western or if they're dungeon crawler or if they're uh, roguelikes or whatever. I probably like them the most. Um, and like I said, I like the grinding aspect. I like the old school um, RPG feel. So, and you know, I like Mass Effect and games like that, but I think they're, they've been taking a bit too far. They're, they are more shooters than RPGs and stuff like that, but I still enjoy them. Um, right, moving along, uh, Metroid Prime Trilogy, um, the US version is a lot nicer, it, came, it comes in the uh, steel case, this just comes with a slip cover and a normal um, uh, DVD case, but it has all the, the same contents like uh, as the American version, and I had, this one was quite expensive, uh, but I, I'm a, quite a big Metroid fan. And I thought the Metroid Prime series was quite kind of uh, Super Metroid and Return of Samus is my favorite Metroid games. But Metroid Prime One was insanely good. Uh, I just remember when I bought that for my GameCube, and I, you know, I shat myself. I shat myself so hard. Uh, that's how good it was. But then Prime Two came, and I didn't really like that a lot. And Prime Three Corruption was a bit better, but. The first Prime game is, is absolutely the best one. Um, 
but this is neat. It comes with all the f the, f the free games, and uh, uh, you you get the, the motion controls from Corruption, which was which was quite good to be frank. So uh, uh, I don't know if I'm going to open it because I've played both uh, the GameCube versions and Corruption already, but it's nice to have. Also picked up um, Skyrim, which was a lot of people's uh, game of the year. Mine was Dark Souls, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, but it's it's a great game. I uh, played it a lot, got all the achievements, um, loved it. I still think Morrowind is the is the best Elder Scrolls game. Uh, don't hate me, uh, but uh, I mean both Oblivion. Uh, Skyrim is better than Oblivion, and all three games, Morrowind, uh, Oblivion, and Skyrim, are great games. But it's just something about Morrowind. I, I have some sort of affection for Morrowind. Maybe it's the nostalgia talking yet again. But I really like Morrowind. Would, would be nice to see a HD remake of Oblivion, uh, of uh, Morrowind actually. Yeah, would be quite nice. Also, I haven't played the earlier PC version since, uh, well, I never had, you know, that kind of a PC so I could play uh, a lot of games um, at home. So, um, never, never really got into those games. Uh, also picked up Dead Rising off the record, uh, was a cheap game, um, haven't tried it yet. I really like, li I, li I really like, I really like the Dead Rising games. Um, the first Dead Rising game uh, was unbelievably blew my, blew my brains out with its awesomeness. Um, I still think it's one of the best games for the Xbox 360 was just just so fun <laughs> and I uh, also picked up uh, Kirby's Adventure and as I said I kind of like platformers so I was quite kind of disappointed with Epic Yarn as soon as I you know I had stopped gushing over the beautiful visuals it was not really a good game you couldn't die in it it was it felt it didn't feel like a Kirby game and even though Kirby games are not insanely hard Epic Yarn was no challenge at all. It was nice looking, but you know, graphics aren't everything. But I hope I, I hope this will be you know sort of like the new Super Mario version of Kirby. Uh, it kind of looks like it, so I want to try this one out, probably with my girlfriend or a, a maiden or something. Uh, also picked up this bad boy. It's the Metal Gear Solid HD collection. It's the PS3 uh, limited edition. It comes with the art book and stuff. It's uh, nice. I haven't opened it yet, and that's probably because I'm going to buy the ordinary 360 version and play that one because I don't want to open this. Just look at it. Yeah. And I really like the uh, Metal Gear Solid games, um, especially the the third one that's in here. I, I didn't really like uh, like a lot of people. I didn't like the second one. It was just the biggest cock block ever in a video game. And when we played the demo, we saw the trailers and we saw Snake in there and we were like, Fuck yeah! This is gonna be the best tactical spy notch mission ever! And then when we played past the, tank, the, the, the tanker level... Jesus Christ. We played as the uh, sort of a... Uh, Pretty boy that slipped on bird shit. God damn it. Hideo Kojima, he made me so angry. Anyway, uh, Metal Gear Solid 2 and Metal Gear Solid Free Snake Eater is included here as well as Peace Walker. I have tried Peace Walker out, I haven't completed it, but now I got the chance to do so on uh, an HD version. But Metal Gear Solid 3 is it's absolutely brilliant. It's uh, my next favorite one. I think uh, Metal Gear Solid the original, the original is my favorite one. And then it's number three, then it's number four, then it's number two of the original series. But I think the PSP games are probably better than the, se uh, the second one anyway, since you don't have to play as Raiden. Or... I also picked up Rage. And uh, this is the Anarchy Edition, I don't really know what some DLC stuff. 
uh, just finished this game because uh, I was in a mood of a first person shooter I haven't been playing one in quite a while so which is strange because that's almost every, all games that are released are first person shooters but um, I tried it out and I kind of liked it I liked the design and the art but um, it was kind of lacking in content I, I thought felt like you were doing the same thing over and over uh, so when you finally got to a place that it, had a lot of dudes that dudes that you need to shoot down. You go back with the mission and say, "Yeah, it's, I cleaned this this hellhole out of the bandits." And then it's like, go to the job board and you get, "Yeah, go back there. I found I lost my bag of marbles in there. Go pick them up." You know, okay. And then you go back and all the bandits are back. And yeah. Um, but um, I I know I, I know a lot of people give this. A lot of shit, but uh, I kind of liked it, even though it's uh, it could have been a lot better. Uh, and I heard that la they laid off a whole lot of id software employees, and I really hope that we will see a Doom 4 um, before you know they disappear, it, because they they're pretty good at making uh, engines. The engine is pretty nice, even though there's some texture popping and, and stuff. And I think if you got a really nice PC, go with the PC version, of course. Of course, go with the PC version. Um, also bought the Cursed Crusade. Uh, me and a buddy of mine is playing this co-op. And it's pretty bad, actually. It's uh, We kind of enjoyed the co-op and the extremely cheesy story and the cheesy uh, one-liners and everything. But I probably won't play this by myself. It's not all that good, actually. The weapon system is pretty nice. Um, and, you know, the setting with crusades and knights and stuff. That's always, you know, that's nice. But, um, god damn, it's, it's glitchy. It's ugly. It's The sound keeps disappearing. And it, it's a mess. Um, which is... Uh, it's a bummer. And I heard that the American version is published by Atlas, so Atlas usually publish really good games. So I think some people in America might have uh, misjudged this game, and, <laughs> and yeah, too bad. But we will uh, finish it. We'll probably finish it uh, later tonight if he comes over. Um, yeah, and that was pretty much I think my pickups for uh, October, November and December of last year um, but you will ha you have to remember that it's been quite a lot of months since um, since we moved so I might have forgot something I probably have because I know these those months are crazy for all our wallets you know the you know all the big releases and everything else come out at the same time uh, but uh, I picked up a whole lot of stuff in January as well as I'm so I will show you in a later video. Uh, this video got quite long as it was, but uh, <laughs> I hope you uh, enjoyed watching. And uh, please uh, like, subscribe, and uh, comment below if you have any questions or you know want to see something in particular, or you know if you think I look more handsome than usual, or you know whatever. So see you next time guys and don't forget to check out my daily video game music uh, playlist because uh, I upload a new piece of music every day so if you're into video game music give that a look. Alright? Have a nice one.